Welcome back to my kitchen renovation. We've got a beautiful sunny morning here. So don't mind me, I'm just trying to get my quick set mud ready to go here. When I have this much sunshine beaming through a window, I take advantage of it for my prime check. Like, I was running around with this thing last night, you know, before I did my first coat of paint. And then I came down here this morning, and lo and behold, the sunshine has revealed all kinds of sins on my wall. <laughs> That sounds almost poetic, doesn't it? Here we go. So this is just 45 minute compound. I'm just using cold water, so I have a few minutes to actually work with it. But what we're gonna to talk about today is when you're finishing your drywall and going into paint, the different steps of construction so that you can get a flawless finish. Okay, here we go. Wow, that is just amazing. What you can see and this is what drives you crazy, because at some point down the road after you're all finished paint, you're going to be sitting here and the light is going to be just, you know, February when the sun is low in the sky. That's when you're going to see all these little minor scratches and imperfections. Doesn't look like much. But there's nothing like sitting on a couch watching TV and going, oh my lord, look how horrible that drywall work is, right? So I am just taking advantage of this light. Okay. Give me two seconds and I'm going to walk you through the whole process. All right, so traditional building process when you're working with your drywall is pretty much you do your three coats of mud, you sand the room, you prime the room, you do a prime check, and that's the process traditionally of taking a light like this and walking around, checking your inside outside corners, um, looking to see if all your narrow holes were filled properly or if you have divots. I had a few divots in the other ceiling. Not a big surprise, like when you're doing your drywall work, you're going to run into situations where different aspects of the work only got two coats instead of three, or the screws were put in just a little deeper than usual. This is why we do a prime check, just to help take care of all those little imperfections. And it's a lot easier after you've sanded the ridges off to go back and fill the divots and the scratches than to try to sand everything perfect the first time. Now. What I like to do, the secret to why, how I get such a great finish when I'm done, is I'll actually sand it and I'll prime it, do a prime check. But I use the 45 minute compound here when I do my prime check because after that compound is on, all of my ceilings are gonna get two coats of paint. All of my walls are gonna get two coats of paint. And this compound here does not flash through the paint after it gets two more coats. So I'm really confident with that situation. I'll come by and I'll do one coat of paint on all the ceilings and walls. I'm not going to use the brush and cut in as you can see, but this allows me to have the colors in the room, right, that are going to be here long term so I can experience the daylight shining into the room, bouncing off these colors because the ceiling with that daylight coming across the horizon exposed a lot of things that I never saw. This color paint, once I put the the, the light on it showed a lot of things I didn't see with my trouble light. So it's just nice to do one coat. It also lets me have a look because it takes, what, 20 minutes to roll all the walls? It allows me to have a look at the color in the finished space and confirm whether or not we like what we see. <laughs> so now that the prime check is all done, we're going to have my wife come down. We're going to pull out some tile. We're going to talk about plans for the future on the back wall but we get to experience the color in our kitchen and decide if we want to go darker or lighter or something different altogether. But this is a great time. It only takes half an hour and half a gallon of paint, so you can invest that. Now, you've all seen the TV shows where they put like five or six colors on the wall and so these little squares. I don't know for how for the life of me anybody can decide that that paint color works by a little square. Most people don't have that kind of vision. So my wife is a visual inspector. She doesn't see things in her head before it's finished like I do. So I take everything one step at a time, show her a completed space, get approval, and then move forward. It works, but that's how most people work, right? So if you're like most people, you're going to want to get one coat on your walls, double check the space before you get too committed to doing all the tedious brushwork and the details. Huh. And once you're happy and you're ready to move forward, then it's simple. Now I'm going to get rid of this. And we'll talk about the rest of the stages so you can finish off your room. All right, so now that our patches are all dried up, we're going to come back with a sanding block. This is a medium to fine grit, right? And you can just give it a nice little scuff. Okay, that'll work great. Your other option, because 
when we do this, we're also going to be sanding the rest of the wall. It needs to be sanded. We can take our sanding pad here. Now, this is my Radius 360. Okay, I put it on my painter stick because it has this little adapter. And we are going to call this first coat. So we're going to also need to sand in between coats. So we want to go completely up and down here. Sand the whole surface, including your patches, okay? That's the other option. Now you can see it was brand new clean. All these spots here are little chunks of dirt and issues that were on the wall. And now it's sanded smooth and it collects it right here. I got this question a lot actually dealing with sanding walls. Do you have to clean all the dust off? And the answer is no. When you sand your drywall the first time, you're going to have a bunch of dust left on the wall. When you're adding your primer, that dust gets mixed in with the paint and it becomes part of the solids content of the paint. Now that's a fancy word for high quality primer has a lot of solid content. Okay, so having dust on the wall just means you're going to make your paint even better. It's going to make it much more solid white and less transparent. And that allows you to see all the imperfections. It'll also fill in a lot of hairline scratches left over from sanding. So leave the dust on there, get your first coat, patch it, check it in the sunlight, repair it with your 45, sand it again, sand your whole wall, right? Then it's time to prime. Now, I've done this in other videos and I've talked about my sheetrock 45 material and how I'm confident that I can just go ahead and put two coats of paint on that and I'm good to go. But if you don't have that available in your area, then you follow this procedure. Just take a bit of primer and brush it on. Okay, done. Now we only have to wait about five or six minutes and a light dusting like that is going to be perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead, sand the rest of this wall, patch the rest of these spots up and then we're gonna go from there. This is the whole process for sanding between coats. There we go. That's done. Now the most amazing thing about that is it makes the wall incredibly smooth. All right. Now we'll hit the rest of these patches. Just a light dusting, right? You're not looking to put a lot of paint on the wall here. There we go. And the purpose of this is just to make sure that all these little spots, if you're using regular compound, they don't end up showing through in the sunlight. This is what happens. It's called flashing. Flashing is the painter's enemy because whenever you have flashing after two coats of finished paint, you can't just go along with the brush after and touch it up because that'll show too, because you're leaving brush mark instead of roller mark. You can't just go by with a little mini roller because acrylic paint, after it's been sitting for a little bit, the levels of acrylic are different from the beginning to the end. So the only way to make a nice wall when you're painting is to paint the whole wall, top to bottom, the whole section. So you can't do touch-ups on flashes. So better safe than sorry, hit it with your primer. Oh, there we go. You can avoid that cost and mistake because flashing in your paint is going to leave you really disappointed. Also means you got to go back out and buy another gallon of paint in order to fix that wall. Because most rooms, one gallon of paint will do jump fine. But if you get flashing, you don't have enough paint left over to do the whole wall again. And that is how you avoid it, right there. Now, we're going to give this about 10 minutes. I'm going to come back with the brush, do the same thing, and we'll show you there. Okay, so while you're waiting for your primer spots to dry, you can go ahead and grab your paint because we still have to do our cut line. Now, if you want to learn my process for painting walls, we'll put a link in the video. You can click the card right here. But what I'm going to do is I basically have five or 10 minutes waiting for this to dry up. So until that's done, I might as well do my first cut in. And having that finished is just good use of time, right? You know that old expression, nobody wants to sit around watching paint dry. Well, the truth is, if you have the right order of doing things, your paint's always drying while you're working, you're never wasting your time. Ooh, gotta be a little careful here, my bench is wobbly. 
Yeah, that's right. You're watching this correctly. There's no tape needed for my process. In the other video I'll show you, I can actually paint this wall faster than you can put the tape on it. I'm talking about in the time it takes for most people to put the tape around their ceiling, I can cut and roll and do all my patching. Uh, so you should learn how to paint like this. Boom. So I just finished doing all the cut line. Now my primer is dry. Now we're going to come by and we're going to call this the first coat of color on the wall. All right, and we're just going to brush over the primer. Same thing, nice and light. We're not doing anything here as far as adding too much texture. Don't want to have too much in the way of brush lines. Really feather that out. Just want to add the color. All right. And what we're doing here is we're just prepping for the second coat. So we can just get this on. Now, this color that I'm using actually covers incredibly well. So I don't have to be that careful. Depending on your paint, be careful. You might want to put a nice little mini roller involved in this program just to get good coverage. Because the brush, you can see it leaves these little white streaks. Okay, so depending on the paint you're using, if you use the lighter touch, you'll get much better coverage. So that's just a tip right there for you. There we go. Good coverage, feather the edges. And the reason I'm using the brush over and over and over again, because it's a really good fail safe technique. If you have uh, blues and reds and that sort of thing, you might find it even necessary to do a brush coat like this and then come back with a mini roller and then an extra coat on your patch just to get the right kind of depth of color in it. There's a lot of real popular colors out there that are somewhat translucent nowadays. They're a real pain in the butt to do repair work on. Uh -huh. Now you see the time that it takes you to run around your room and hit all your patches, this paint will dry because we're putting it on real thin. Okay, this whole application only needs about five or 10 minutes. And by the time you're done prepping your patches, you can just come right back with the brush and the roller and do the wall all over again and put the final coat on. Now I wanted to mention really quickly, um, because I don't have any trims done yet, some of you are gonna notice, hey, what's going on with the ceiling up here? It's pretty nasty and where's the baseboard? Here's the thing, when you're doing a project of this scale, a couple of rooms, all the drywall work, the ceiling paint, the wall paint, all the touch-ups, you've got a lot of time, it's in your favor here. You can put in the carpentry at any point before you roll your second coat, okay? So what we're gonna do is just show you, here's my baseboard, right? Now, what I'm gonna do today is actually set up some sawhorses in this room, and I'm gonna paint all my baseboard trims out, I'm gonna paint all my crown out, and then I'm gonna cut and install it so that I only have a quick little few nail holes and some caulking to do, then I can do my entire second coat. And we're gonna be able to show you that process at the end of this video, but i just give you an idea. All that's left for finishing this room, my process is to install this baseboard about a quarter to half inch off the ground. And I'll just nail it in like that. And then when I come do my flooring, my flooring will slide up and underneath, okay? And you'll see that there'll be a gap. Old homes especially, is really necessary to do it this way. And then you come back with a small detailed trim like a doorstop or a shoe mold, and you close that gap after the fact. There's no way you're gonna get a piece this thick of wood to follow the contour and close all those gaps up. A short piece might look really pretty. And you might wanna say there's an argument for putting the flooring in first. Now in new homes, you could put the flooring in first and then put all your trims on and avoid that detail element. But in older homes like this, the, the walls have got too much of a curve, and even though we're using some floor leveler in places, it's really difficult to guarantee that you can manipulate this board. So, what I like to do is put all my baseboards on first. I have them painted. I use the adhesive on the back. I stick that on the wall, throw the odd brad nail in, in part of the detail so that I can just put some of that 45 compound in there. But like I said, we'll get all that detail in a minute. But this is why I'm installing with a gap. And then I've got probably two days of touch-ups and waiting for the good sunlight and all that sort of thing. I'm not in a hurry to finish the paint. So while I'm working on the paint, I can also do all the trim. Here we go. Ah. And of course, if you install your drywall with a gap under the floor, you have lots of room for expansion and contraction with any kind of flooring that you install. 
So once everything is all done, we're gonna take in our second cut. Now listen, important to know that when you're painting your walls, on the first coat, you can do the cut after the roll. There's no rule about that. But on the second coat, you really want to do all the cutting in details on each individual section of wall and then roll it right away while it's wet. Remember, the technology in paint nowadays has it so that this coat of paint can actually dry in about 20 minutes. And you really want to go wet edge on wet edge. So having a good technique here to finish quickly is important. All right, here we go. Now, if you'd like to see all the kind of specialty tools that we use for doing our paint gear and my whole rig, then I suggest you click the video right here and you'll be able to see all my favorite tools and we're also going to include the bonus feature of how to wash it so that it lasts forever for you. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you in the next video.